Millions of years ago, when humans and gods didn't exist in the universe, there lived a supernatural entity called the Titans. They were the most powerful and divine creatures, but their reign was ended by their own sons, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. The oldest brother Zeus was the smartest of the lot. He convinced his brother Hades to create a beast with his powers, a beast so strong and evil that it could defeat their parents. From Hades' flesh, the unspeakable horror of Kraken was born, who ended the Titans and gave immense power to the brothers. During the distribution of their parents' powers, Zeus gets to be the god of the heavens, and Poseidon gets to be the god of the sea. But Hades is tricked by Zeus into being being the bearer of the trauma and sadness of the underworld. Next, Zeus creates humans whose prayers keep him and other gods immortal. At the same time, Hades uses humans' fear to gain powers. However, as time passes, war and suffering multiply in the world that Zeus once thought was perfect. People start questioning why their father would put them through such hell, and their trust in God starts to fade, hinting towards a terrifying thought of a battle between gods and the mortals. <laughs> mortals would be doomed for sure. Oh, this movie's about that? All right, let's see what happens. The scene changes to a poor fishing man sailing through a dangerous sea storm. Far away, in the dead of the sea, he sees a coffin-like box floating towards him. He somehow fishes it into his boat and comes across a horrifying sight. Inside the coffin is the corpse of a mother holding her newborn baby, who is fortunately still alive. The fisherman takes the baby boy into his arms and swears to protect and feed him. Somewhere nearby, a mysterious woman is watching them intensely. When the kid grows up to be a teen, the fisherman's wife gets pregnant. While the boy is afraid his father will forget him after holding his own blood in his arms, he is assured that their bond is stronger than any relation by blood. Time passes and the kid one day becomes a brave fisherman named Perseus. He has a little sister who he loves more than anything in the world and a loving family of four. By now, human rebellion against the gods has multiplied. Several nations have burned sacred statues, led forces to Olympus, and stopped praying all together, all of which have posed a great threat to the lives of the immortals. One afternoon, Perseus, with his family, is on his boat traveling a long way to fish. However, even after hours of trying, their nets come back empty. His father blames the gods for punishing them with hunger and starvation, while his mother claims that at least they are blessed with life. Perseus stands neutral to the conversation, as his only concern is his starving family. Suddenly, they see a massive statue of Zeus being attacked by some men. They are soldiers of the country named Argos, whose king had ordered them to knock down the statue. After the massive art of concrete falls, there is a moment of silence before something starts moving in the water. All of a sudden, bat-like humanoids soar up to the sky and kill the soldiers one after another. Perseus and his family watch in horror, too afraid to move and grab the bird's attention. When the killings stop, the birds merge into one and transform into Hades, the god of the underworld himself. There to punish the foolish who dared to disrespect his brother, Hades' eyes land upon the boat Perseus is in. He pushes it with a slight force, sending sending the entire family into the sea. Perseus tries his best to get his loved ones out, but in the end, he is the only survivor. In the following scene, a rescue team from Argos arrives and brings Perseus to the palace. Although he was the only surviving one from the fight, the king sees it as a victory and orders his men to celebrate. The queen, going along with her husband, calls herself the god and insults Zeus with her harsh judgment. Before she knows it, the terrifying Hades appears in front of them and sucks the beauty and youth out of her. Perseus tries foolishly to attack him, angered about his family's death, but a woman stops him. Since human fear feeds Hades' power, he doesn't want to simply kill everyone in the palace. Instead, he gives them a choice. They offer their beautiful princess as a sacrifice to him, or the unspeakable horror of Kraken will be freed upon Argos. After announcing that the king has the next ten days to decide, Hades turns towards Perseus. He freezes for a second and calls him the son of Zeus before disappearing. Perseus doesn't know what to make of his words, but everyone else figures out that he is a demigod, the offspring of a god and a human. He is thrown in prison and tortured in hopes that 
that he will find a way to save the city. The kind-hearted princess tries to stop the soldiers. She is happily ready to sacrifice her life if it means that her people will get to live. But the king doesn't want that. In the next scene, a woman is allowed to meet Perseus in prison. She is the same mysterious woman who was around when the fisherman found Perseus and the same one who stopped him from attacking Hades earlier. She introduces herself as Io, a mortal who once refused the advancement of a god and was cursed to never age or die. It hardly seems like a curse, but Io explains that she had to watch all of her loved ones die and live on without them. Since she has been alive for almost a thousand years, she knows everything about Perseus, his mother, and the story of how they ended up in the sea. Several years ago, the rebellion king of a country led a large army towards Olympus, angering the gods. Zeus, who loved humans as his own, didn't want to kill them, so he thought of making an example of the king instead. Disguised as the king, Zeus went to the queen and made love to her. When the king returned from the battle, he found his wife impregnated by his worst enemy. Burning with rage, he put her into a coffin and threw her into the ocean, where she gave birth to Perseus. Perseus finally has answers to how his life came to be, and now, his only goal is to kill Hades for revenge. Io explains to him that if he kills the Kraken, Hades will be at his weakest, which is his best chance to kill him. And so, Perseus joins the Argosian soldiers on their journey to find and kill the Kraken. Time passes quickly, and on the fourth day of their journey, the chief in command asks Perseus if he knows how to use a sword. He is given a little demonstration before being attacked out of the blue. Perseus falls at first, but quickly catches up and surprises everyone. Given his natural-born talent in sword fighting, he is told that he indeed has the flesh of a god. Then we are introduced to Perseus' stepfather, the king who is now living as a peasant in a dark cave. Hades approaches the man and reveals that he is working in Zeus's favor to gain his trust and strike him at his lowest. Since the former king also wants Zeus dead, he is ready to do anything to make Hades happy. Hence, the god of the underworld turns him into a demon and sends him to kill Perseus. Somewhere else, as the soldiers take shelter for the day, Perseus wanders off into the jungle and finds a sword and a bunch of flying horses. Ooh, they were sent to him by his father Zeus, who wants his son to have a fair chance at winning. However, Perseus refuses both the sword and the pure black horse sent for him. Suddenly, he hears a soldier cry for help and discovers the demon sent by Hades is here to kill everyone. He leaps at Perseus with a deadly strike, but the hero is fast to defend himself. The soldiers join him and overpower the demon, cutting off his left hand and urging him to flee. They quickly follow him, but have to split into two groups to look for him. The demon disappears, but instead, the soldiers are attacked by a giant scorpion living under the sand. This movie is based on real history. A fierce battle ensues, ending the lives of many soldiers one after another. At one point, Perseus is almost stung, but is saved at the right time by Io. Just when the scorpion dies and they think that they have won, they are surrounded by many more, even bigger scorpions. The soldiers get ready to fight again and are surprised when the giant creatures stop in their tracks. One of them points towards a figure standing nearby who happens to be Jin. They are the creatures who were once humans but are now charcoal, placed in a human form and bonded with black magic. The commander doesn't trust them, but he agrees to receive help for the night. Suddenly, Perseus falls to the ground because of his injured arm which has been infected by Hades' venom. In his tent at night, the leader of the Jinn uses black magic to heal the arm. The soldiers misjudge him, which causes a small brawl, but the Jinn explains that his kind has been waiting for ages to see the gods fall, and Perseus is their best hope. In the morning, they ride the scorpions through the desert and reach the garden of Stygia by evening. Perseus finds out this is the place where the Kraken defeated the Titans. They go deeper into the deserted place to meet the Stygian witches who know the secret to kill Kraken. Io warns Perseus to be careful and ask the witches only what he needs to know. Stygian witches, please, I need to know. Do the ladies think that I am sexy? They go into a cave where they see three gruesome witches, one of them carrying an eyeball that helps them all see. The smell of fresh human blood makes them attack the soldiers, but Perseus gets a hold of their eyeball and uses it as leverage to free his mates. The witches then find finally reveal that the only way to kill Kraken is through the demoness, Medusa. Long ago, the god of the sea Poseidon liked a beautiful Medusa and took advantage of her. She prayed to the goddess Athena for help, but instead, the goddess was repulsed by her. Hence, Medusa was cursed to never be seen by any living creature. Any 
anyone who gets a look at her face will turn into stone, including Kraken. Not long after, the group sets off to the underworld to look for the prison Medusa is in. On their way, Perseus runs into his father Zeus, who offers him to come to heaven and live a happy life. Perseus refuses the offer, but accepts a gold coin Zeus gives him as a parting gift. In the following scene, the group is in front of the sea that leads them to the underworld. The djinn bribes the ferryman using Perseus's coin, and as a result, they are taken right to the Medusa's prison. Io has to stay outside, because only men are allowed inside the prison, but she warns them that no man has ever made it out. As the group enters the prison, they immediately hear a feminine chuckle. <laughs> Perseus tells everyone to keep their eyes down and guard up. Suddenly, arrows begin flying their way, hitting the commander in his chest, and before they know it, they are being attacked by the demoness. Perseus almost falls into a pit of fire, but is able to save Jin and himself at the right time. This part looked terrible in 3D and theaters, I remember it. As they are looking for the rest of the group, Medusa troubles two of the young soldiers. Both of them mistakenly take a glance at her face, which costs them their lives. Next, she catches Jin and tries turning him into stone. But because of his black magic, he is able to attack her one last time before dying. The commander takes this opportunity to stab her tail before he is also turned into stone. Finally, taking advantage of her weakened state, Perseus beheads her with his sword. An anxious Io sees Perseus come out with the bag of Medusa's head and is ecstatic. But her happiness doesn't last long because she is stabbed to death seconds later by Perseus's stepfather. Before dying, Io gives Perseus the sword he was given gifted by Zeus. He finally uses it to defeat the demon and accepts the flying horse as well. At the same time, in Olympus, Hades comes to Zeus to ask for permission to unleash the Kraken. Hoping that his children will pray to him again, Zeus allows Hades to do as he pleases. Back in Argos, the people have formed a cult to sacrifice the princess, so the Kraken takes her instead of them. The massive beast is released and begins shaking the city of Argos. Zeus hurriedly asks his brother to stop the chaos because he thought the prayers would help him, but his children are instead scared. Hades laughs at his brother, <laughs> claiming that he has been a fool and that the people's fear is fueling him. Subsequently, the princess is hung by a bridge as a sacrifice, but the beast doesn't just take her as the people imagined. The humanoid bats are set free to kill anyone they please. The kraken emerges from the sea and is about to attack the princess when Perseus arrives and climbs up the bridge with Medusa's head. The massive beast turns to stone and with it, Medusa and the princess also fall into the sea. Before Perseus can do anything, Hades appears in front of him in his weakest state. Perseus uses his magical sword to strike at his uncle, which sends the god back to the underworld, where he is locked for eternity. Finally, Perseus saves the princess and brings her to the shore. She thanks him and promises to serve the nation as a competent queen. In the last scene, Zeus comes to meet his son, allowing him the choice to remain a human for the rest of his life. Screw you, dad! The the movie ends as he gives his son a special gift by bringing Io back to life. Oh, thanks, Dad. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.